Today, we'll look at the problem with Next.js. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we'll explore what some developers have identified as a problem with Next.js. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Some developers think Next.js is broken, and we should definitely talk about it. You don't have to go too far into the comments on the Vercel YouTube channel to see comments like this. And that's just it. Shouldn't the behavior of the development environment be the same as the behavior of the production environment? It only makes sense, but that's not the way Next.js is meant to work. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, I've got VS Code open on the left, and on the right, I've got the Chrome browser. Now on the left, you can see I've started the dev server with npm run dev, and then after that, the site has started at localhost 3000, which I have running over here in Chrome. You can also see it says running server-side code down here in the terminal. Now let me refresh the page in Chrome, and we get a new timestamp, and we once again get the running server-side code message here in the terminal. Now this is in dev mode, and this is a static page. So when I refresh, I really wouldn't expect to get this timestamp, but I do. Now let's compare to a production build. So I'm going to press Control C to get out of the server, and instead I'm going to type npm run build, and it will quickly build this example project. And after it builds, I'm going to type npm run start, and we'll check the difference in the browser. So it should be finished in just a second, almost. Building traces, there we go. Now npm run start. Get that going, I'm going to press control and click the address to start it in a new browser tab here so we can see the difference. Now this is the production build. Let me go ahead and refresh. And now we don't get a new timestamp. It doesn't update here. And notice we're not getting that running in the server either over here in the terminal. We're not getting that console message when I refresh. So there is definitely a difference between dev mode and production mode for the same code. Now let's look at why. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration, and now back to the video. We don't have to go any further than the build report we have over here in the terminal window. So let me just scroll back up to what we had from the build report. And you see this slash over here, this is the home page that we're running here in Chrome, and it has this empty circle next to it, this little O. Down below, it says O means static, pre-rendered as static content. So that's what's happening during the build. So it runs that code at build time. And if I scroll back up into this build report just a little bit, you can see our terminal message that we were getting with that console log, running server side code. And you can see that up here in my code. If I quickly close the terminal, you can see it has that console log statement. Let me open this back up just so we can discuss because it runs that server-side code during the build, but it creates static content, as it says down here at the bottom of the build report, pre-rendered as static content. Now, if we weren't new using Next.js, for example, say we're just creating an HTML web page, that's also static content. And that's the goal of Next.js, is to create that static content so it is served quickly. And when it is served from a server, it is usually cached with a content delivery network. Those are servers at the edge, closer to where you are or somebody else in the world, closer to where they're running their browser. So they get served that page faster. So that is important. And it's also kind of just the way HTML works, even if it wasn't just Next.js. So is this really broken? Because we're running the code, we need to see the code when we're in dev mode. Let me press Alt-Z so it wraps this down. And we need to see this code. We want to see this console log and we wanna see any errors we have in our server side code when we're in dev mode. But in production, it doesn't run this code at all. It only runs it at the build and generates that static content. 
Now, as a side note, I should also say that this also applies to Next.js route handlers. Route handlers are really just server components as well. They just don't render pages, they send back data. But on the server side, they're basically server components. So the same concept applies. So what if you don't want this behavior? Let's look at how you can opt out of static caching. I'm in the Next.js docs and we're looking at the opting out of data caching section here and it lists several ways. Now what I have used in the past would be to set this route segment option and it is defining dynamic and setting that equal to force dynamic. But this applies to the entire route. So if you don't want that, there is a new way to apply it just to a component. And let's quickly look at that. It's so new, it's currently named unstable underscore no store. I'm sure in the future when it becomes part of a stable release, it will just probably be called no store. But you can see how that is applied right here as well. So let's go back to VS Code and look at how I applied this to a server-side rendered component or AKA dynamic component. And we're back in VS Code and I've got Chrome again on the right side. Now we're looking at essentially the same component except I've got it at a route that is slash SSR, standing for server-side rendering. And what we have in here is the unstable no store function and that's what we've imported. Now above, notice I also commented out the other option that you could use for the entire segment, that route segment config, which would be export const dynamic equals force dynamic. But either one of these will apply dynamic rendering, that is server side rendering to the Next.js route or individual component with no store. So I'm calling no store inside of the component. I've still got the console log statement here running server side code, and we expect this to log. I've also got the my date stamp here still being created, and that's what's being rendered. So when I refresh the page each time, now I'm getting a new timestamp once again. We go ahead and open the terminal, and I scroll down, we can see that this is logged to the terminal every time I refresh the page. Now notice we're still running the production build here. So this is the behavior we expect in a server-side rendered page compared to when, if I can go back here to the home page we have, this is a static page still in the production build, and I refresh, that timestamp does not update. Forward, now we get a new timestamp, we're on the dynamically rendered page. So that is really the difference, and you can opt out of that behavior, but sometimes it's important to create a static page. So with all of this information in mind, do you think Next.js is really broken? Personally, I really don't think so. I think this is by design, and I think it's important that we see our code run in dev mode. However, if our code is supposed to generate static HTML, then in production, it really shouldn't run that server-side code. It should be generated during build time, and then that HTML, that static page, should be handled just like any other HTML and cached in CDNs around the world so it's delivered to users faster. I really don't see how Next.js can change this behavior. It does add an extra step for us as developers because we should probably build our code locally and then check to see how it runs in production. And if you don't do that, maybe you have a staging system where it is deployed to a staging website before it would actually go to the production website. Either way would make sense, but you just wanna test out that production code before it goes live, and that's a good practice anyway. And maybe you have a different opinion. Maybe you think Next.js is broken because of this, or you don't wanna use it because of this. Or maybe you have an idea of how Next.js could fix this issue and make it more palatable for some developers. Either way, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hey guys, I've recently started a Patreon and I wanna give a shout out to my top level member, Holy Coder, who is a progress provider and also my senior level member, Eldad. You guys are helping me reach my goals. Also, thank you so much to all of the junior level members. And if you're interested in my Patreon, I post exclusive content and early release content there. I really appreciate your support. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.